are now live and on lockdown. Are you ready? Ready, ready? Broadcasting from Edinburgh, Scotland and across the globe. Listen here. You're listening to Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders podcast on Hearts on Live Radio with your host, Fraser Ramsey. Hi, this is Afia Letha from KingdomBeats.com. Proud to be a sponsor of Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders on heartsonglive.co.uk. And good day, it's Saturday the 2nd of February and you're tuned in to Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders. It's another, it's another weekend. Hey, we're here. It's another month. Hey, well, I don't know what you're up to and what you're doing, but you are tuned in to Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders on heartsonglive.co.uk. Uh, and my guest today, we have Nico C. Austin, all the way from Virginia in the USA. We'll be talking to her about uh, some or lots of her businesses, a brief chat. She's got a lot of things going on. Uh, she more... More businesses that she had. Well, I was going to say juggling balls in there, but that may be the wrong wrong phrase. But hey, it's all good fun. But uh, uh, that, as I say, she's uh, like she has probably like arms like an octopus. That's what I'll say. She juggles a lot of things. But we'll leave that one there. But uh, anyway, it's all good. Anyway, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. She has one of her recent businesses. She's kicking off recent projects. Um, and also some of the other things that she dabbles into as well. I was talking a little bit about her life in general, but we're going to start with what she does now. Uh, we are going to have a general chit-chat now and go from there welcoming my guests. So as I say, so Nikwa uh, C. Austin, welcome to Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders on heartsonlive.co.uk. So how are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Thank you for having me on your show. So uh, let's uh, dive straight in. Uh, we are, uh, before we do, well, just quickly before we dive straight in, we're going to, just on the show coming out, we are going to have some, our usual 60 second singing tip by Benita Charles from benitacharles.com uh, we are going to have uh, we are going to have uh, music from Brent Mann from brentmannmusic.com uh, and maybe well I'm not sure what other tune I've decided yet but I will pick a random tune just to make it exciting uh, but I'll keep you guessing but uh, as I say let's uh, fire in Maniqua or my guest all the way from Virginia and USA so um, as I say so how's your day been what's been happening uh, how have you how's your have you been doing anything uh, you got any plans for the, it's now sort of the start of the month for uh, February have you got any goals you want anything to kick off with now, probably one of my goals would probably be just to learn how to relax and actually take care of myself health wise. But um, right now, this weekend, I'm actually looking forward to the Super Bowl ah, that's taking place on Sunday. Super yeah. Bowl, that could be fun. Happy days. That'll be a bit the usual 10 hour Super Bowl day uh, yes. for something that only lasts for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pretty much, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, it's, right. <laughs> oh, it's a game of American football. Oh, it only lasted the game only lasted an hour, but the whole thing lasted about ten hours you know, the whole day. Yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. Uh, there's more more entertainment than there's gameplay. <laughs> so <laughs> you're right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's crazy. But uh, but who who's, who's actually in the Super Bowl this year? Um, it is the um Los Angeles Rams and the. Uh, New England Patriots. Oh, yeah, that's right. New England Patriots. Uh, as I say, Sevilla Morgan from uh, Florida, who is will be happy with that. She's a New England Patriots fan. Uh, she's very, she'll be jumping with joy with that one. Uh, but yes. yeah, so let's crack on. So let's tell us what is it you're doing? What's your recent project? And what you're doing now? And what you're sort of setting up? And why you're setting up? Give us a bit of a background. Okay, so my. Um, my recent project that I have going on is um, I Model Curves. Um, it is a plus size modeling agency based out of Virginia. It's based out of here in Newport News, where I currently reside. And I Model Curves is basically an um, it's a company where I focus on plus size women as well as teen girls, and just show them how to just basically uplift and empower them by teaching them how to build body confidence and self-esteem through the use of modeling. Um, right now, we are doing we're doing okay. For our first month, because we started on January the 1st, for our first month, we have, um, we actually have a sponsor. Um, we're working on two more sponsors. Um, today, we actually will gain a brand ambassador for the company, so I am super psyched about that. Um, right now, currently, I have um, 22 women under my belt and always looking for more plus size um, women. I just want to 
I just want basically I want to show society that we are just more than we are more than just a pretty face. The we're always being told that um, only you know a plus size woman has that face. You know we have those chunky cheeks and everything else. But I want to be able to show the world we can have more than just a pretty face. We can do anything and everything that everybody else can do. That we are capable to become models as well, and that we're not going to allow society to make us feel any different about how we already feel. Okay, so uh, with so what is your you've set up this plus size modeling agency? Uh, are you hoping to do lots of fashion shows, or how do you want to, or what you what's your aims for it? Like add commercials to it, or what do you want to do with it? Well, my end goal, the end goal is to have fashion shows and do different photo shoots, not just here in the United States, but all over the world. Um, Currently, this year, we will have a fashion show. It will be in August. Um, We're actually going to um, create a scholarship fund where we can raise money for high school students to be able to go to college, especially in the medical field, because that's where I'm actually aiming towards. Um... In a few months, we're actually getting ready for our first um, mini women empowerment conference that will be in May of this year. I want to be able to do empowerment conferences as well because just because I want women to model as well as participate in fashion shows, the runway and everything else, we have to start by learning how to accept ourselves for who we are loving the skin that we are in and then being able to produce the work that we know we can produce. So those are basically the things that I'm actually trying to put in play. I'm also wanting to work with the teen girls. Um, Eventually I want to have a dance troupe through our model curves, um, working with teen girls, empowering them, uplifting them, letting them know that they don't have to change themselves for nobody that they can do anything and everything that they want to do, teach them etiquette, you know, like be a mentor to the young girls, not just the ones that live in urban areas, but urban, city, country, everywhere. So how did that, that uh, obviously you've got well, plus size models, they tend to be they're obviously bigger than your normal average model, basically, um, which is out there. But how would you deal with you know, health aspects with, with people who are quite big or maybe more big naturally, but maybe when it comes to maybe over, someone might need to lose a few pounds to, because they're over overly plus. But how would that coincide the health aspects of modeling? Well, with well, with my company, it's a little bit differently. Um, yes, I will say that the majority of us do have health issues. I, for one, I do as well. The main thing that I want my models to know is that you can be plus size and you can be healthy by being plus size. I do have a few women that are um, overly plus size. They love the skin that they're in. They're doing what they can to make sure that they are taking care of themselves the way that they are supposed to. So that is always a great thing. But it's always good to constantly keep educating um, educating my models to let them know that, you know, it's good to be plus size, but make sure that you're doing it the healthy way. You know, not a whole lot of junk food or anything out like that. But some of my models, they do exercise. I also exercise as well. I do yoga. A few of my models, they actually go to the gym. Some of them are vegan. And so, you know, when it, when you think about plus size women as well as men, the first thing that a lot of people think about is, oh, all they eat is junk food and all they do is sit around and eat. That's not true. Majority of the time, when it comes to our bodies, even though we can eat healthy, some of us are just naturally big. Like our ancestors are like that. Our grandparents were like that. So it just passes down from generation to generation. Like in my family, that's how it works for me. Like everybody in my family is big, but we are healthy. Um, uh, I guess I'm hoping that you understand what I'm saying. Majority of a majority of us are athletic at the sizes that we are that we are at and everything. So I try to encourage my women, you know, to do the same thing. Be mindful about your health. Make sure that your health is in check. If the doctor tells you you need to lose some weight, then do what the doctor tells you to do. If that's what's going to keep you here and you do want to pursue your dream as being a model, then you do what you have to do to make sure that you stay here. So okay. that's how that works. But I also want to do a conference where we talk about the health and the wellness and things of that nature and sponsor some nonprofit organizations to help out with that as well. 
That's cool. Well, we're going to take a brief uh, break there in a second. We're going to come back. We've got um, our features on the show today. We have uh, Benita Charles from Benita, our 60-second singing chip tips. Yeah, put my teeth in there. 60-second uh, singing tip, motivational by Benita Charles from BenitaCharles.com, all the way from New York City, the Big Apple, and the city that never sleeps. Uh, so uh, looking forward, we have a regular feature now going forward. We have added also, we are going to have a feature co uh, um a standing co-host, uh, well, not co-host, but host um, for the show going forward will be Curtis Brooks from Curtis Brooks Media Productions. Uh, he'll be standing in and doing some interviews, uh, which I can take a wee break every now and then so I don't hit the burnout road. And uh, that's not, not, not good, to, as you can see. So it just means we uh, look forward to uh, hearing some... Uh, great interviews uh, that Curtis will be doing and is standing in for me uh, every now and then, so which will be great fun. Um, we're going to take a brief break. We're going to play uh, uh, Benita Charles and we'll play a tune by Brent Mann from brentmannmusic.com. Uh, so we'll be back after this. Hi, this is Benita Charles from benitacharles.com on Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders with your 60-second singing tip. In today's tip, I will share the best advice I ever got. The best advice I ever got was to create my own music. This was significant because it allowed me to fully express myself from the heart and it helped me to find my own unique voice and style in my music. Now I can sing any song and make it my own. I encourage you to find your own voice by sharing your knowledge of your industry and creating your own products and services. There are people who need to hear what you have to offer. Your fans are waiting. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for the next 60-second singing tip on Ramsey Unleashed, Going Beyond Borders on heartsonglive.co.uk. ocean you were tossed by the sea other ships had set their sails and you lost sight of me waves have started to get high you were blinded by the storm that's when you saw my light and knew you're not far from shore not far from shore I'll be standing there And waiting not far from shore As you pass by me tonight I'll be your beacon of light Not far from Welcome back to Ramsey Unleashed, going beyond borders on heartsonlive.co.uk with my guest, Nico C. Austin, all the way from Virginia, USA. Uh, we've just been talking about her uh, um, I plus size modeling business uh, agency. I keep forgetting the name. <laughs> it's one thing, it just seems to... I think it's just an, <laughs> I, was it I, I Curves? 
Uh-uh. I'm I model curves. I model like, curves. I, I think it's just a, it's a, one of those t- weird. It's one of those names it takes a while to sink into the brain. Uh, I model curves. <laughs> it's one of those names. But yes, yeah, so we've just been talking about I model curves and about plot size modeling uh, and things like that. But uh, let's touch on about some of your other businesses that you do and some of the things you've dabbled in. Um, I'm just going to touch base with it. Um, I have another business with my husband that we both own. Actually, it is two of them that we both own. Um, Rock Bottom Creations, where we create um, customized gifts and home decor. Um, He specializes with creating um, hand-painted gumball machine candy jars and paddles, whereas on my end, I specialize in the wedding section where I create glitter glasses and T-shirts for um, wedding parties and bridal parties. The other company that my husband and I own is called Love Bazaar Photography. Um, Love Bazaar Photography, we actually started doing that in 2016, so this is coming up on our third year. Um, We specialize in boudoir photography. The reason why we chose boudoir is because, one, it's a field that not a lot of people like to touch, and number two, we both feel comfortable with our bodies, and we want to be able to showcase to the world that once you step in front of the camera with us, when you walk away, you will have a great feeling and a boosted confidence about yourself. Sometimes, especially for women, it may take for them to put on some lingerie just to know how good they actually look, clothes on and off. So that's one of the reasons why we decided to take up boudoir and just specialize in that. But we also do um, proms as well. We have a contract with um, Prince Edward County Public School Systems all the way in Farmville, Virginia, where we um, work with the middle school and we conduct their proms for them. So we will be participating in their prom again this year um, in April. So I'm really happy about that. And in my other business, the other two businesses that I own personally, one is called the Glitz and Glam's Chronicles, which is a Facebook um, talk show that I started doing in March. So I'm coming up on a one year anniversary cool. in March of this year. I'm really excited about that. Um, with the Glitz and Glam's Chronicles, I talk about different topics that people have on an everyday basis, but because the conversation is too deep, they can't go forward into it, especially if they're on the job. So that's where I come in and I give them my opinion and my insight. And then my last business is the Virtual Phoenix, where I am a virtual assistant as well as a loan signing agent and a mobile notary. So I do a lot of things, not just to keep myself busy, but because I feel that you know, we can do whatever we want to do as long as we put our minds to it and we have the time to know how to balance it. So therefore, I like doing what I do. I love that graphic designing and everything. So I just do it. Very well. But there has to be insight to what she does. So jack of all trades and probably master of none, like me. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> There we go. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm mastered it all, but just not quite mastered it all. <laughs> um, yes, anyway, uh, so that's an insight. We are going to talk about some of the more serious stuff in her life now. Uh, one, uh, Nikwa uh, talks about her son, finding out her son was autistic, and also that she's been through a domestic violence relationship in the past. Uh, two very challenging issues uh, in somebody's life. Um, so we're going to dis- discuss that, and we're going to at least uh, and also have um, more music and more. We've got a shout. We're just going to do a brief mention with our uh, people who support us and what we do in the show. Um, and then we've got Eileen Smith from EileenSmith.com. That's I L E A N E Smith.com. She is literally the light. I managed to meet her in Philadelphia when I was on holiday last year. I can say last year because it's 2019. Um, even though it doesn't seem that long ago, I met her in Philadelphia. I went for some uh, a nice lunch uh, at a place called Legends in Philadelphia for a couple of legends. <coughs> yes, we're a couple of, we're a couple of legends. <laughs> not, to, not to make myself my head any bigger. No, uh, but Eileen Smith, the queen, who uh, does we, as she's known, she tests every pretty much live streaming podcast and platform you you can think of. She If she finds it, she'll test it and she will rate it and you can certainly learn from it very quickly. Uh, they've got John Drummond from IdeasGoLive.com, who is a web designer, does web websites, so very good. He's, he's American, but he lives in Edinburgh. He's been here for a while now. Uh, he's married and he's got his, his family, so he is well and truly Scottish, pretty much, but he is great. He's a sound guy. Um, 
I'm looking for a, web- a good website, as I say, John Drummond from IdeasGoLive.com. Uh, you also we have uh, For Humanities, Shannon Griffin does T-shirts and stuff, and also other stuff, Cancer Survivor. And we also have, I must say, Edmund Dusters. You want cleaning done? You can go to edmundusters.com. We also have Brent Mann from brentmanmusic.com supporting us, which is great. Uh, lots and lots of people supporting us. It's fantastic. I'm actually, I've forgotten who's on my list now, actually. <laughs> I'm actually reading them off, but... Um, it's a great to all the people who do support us. It's fantastic. It's great fun. Uh, we thank you for the support and what they do. Uh, and, and my obviously my main sponsor, which is my main main sponsor, is Ephia Lethem from KingdomBeads.com. Ephia Lethem, the creator and uh, the owner of KingdomBeads.com. And those semi-precious gems, if you like what she does, you want to buy them, you can go to kingdombeads.com and buy them. And as I say, a 10% uh, will come to the show, uh, will come to me, uh, and to support what we do and to grow the project, grow Ramsey and Lee, grow the brand and support people that we are working with. And that's the, that's what it's about. So if you're looking for, as they say, if you're listening to this, uh, Valentine's um, is coming up. If you're looking for some of those special edition bracelets for your loved ones, you're going to feel the love, get the... And you can start listening to some Barry White, um, and you'll be fine. And you can um, so you can uh, go to, as I say, buy those special special bracelets and look good in kingdombeads dot com. Anyway, so that's me. Uh, that's our wee supporters and what's going on. As I say, um, we're going to come now. Nico's going to talk about uh, finding out that our son was autistic because I have interviewed some people in the past that have had deal with dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism. Um, our previous guest on my previous brand was uh, Ruth Ellen Henry, who deals with that as well. So, uh, well, Nico, so tell us, what was it like to find out your son was autistic and how did you deal with that? Um, I had people tell me that my son was showing signs of autism at the age of two. But because of me being a black woman, and I'm, I don't want to even use that as an excuse of my race. So let me let me retract that statement. I'm not even going to use that as an excuse because that's what it wasn't. What it, that wasn't. What it was. I'd be wondered if, I'd be wondered if you said I'd be wondered if you said you're Chinese, but that may be a bit. Of, yeah, I could you be know a bit, what? I could I, be a bit strange. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because I had somebody say, "Are you mixed?" I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. "Well, well, well." My ancestry is Indian, and my great great grand and my grandmother um, was Romanian from my father's side. I, other than that, I don't know. Unless yeah. unless Asian yeah. is in my blood, it's, it's somewhere. Yeah, we're at least, my we're eyes all... are too cheeky. <laughs> Yes, we're all at least 50% Russian, but you'll be all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Sorry. I don't, we digress. You're good. You're we good. digress. So, mm. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm not even going to say that it was because of me being a black woman. I'm actually going to say it was because of my reputation um, that I had a son. And I did not want to admit to the fact that there could have been a problem. So three, he went three years of me not helping him. Right. And it took for me, it took until he was five when I got ready to take him to kindergarten registration and how he did not sit down and he wanted to walk around and talk and everything else. And he was the only child that did that. Not realizing that people was watching him. I had a uh, um, the principal and everything. They came up to me and they said, we may need to touch your child to see if he um, qualifies for special education because we feel that something is wrong. Because he doesn't know this, he doesn't know that. He didn't know the basic things that he should have known at those different milestones. He was not hitting milestones, and I wasn't aware. And um, it took until, I'll never forget it, June 2012, it took for them to say, well, let's retest him um, and see how it goes. Now, when school starts, if he doesn't do well, then we will have to, um, we no, we will have to retest him in September And then we will have to put him in special education classes and see if he is autistic because he was showing all the signs. September of that, about September, October, they did the testing on him. And then we found out that um, he was diagnosed with autism. It was a very hard thing for me to accept because at that point in time, I had no choice but to accept it. You know, the crazy part was that when... um, I will say Child Protective Services, um, they didn't step in and threaten me, but it was the school system that my son was affiliated with. Um, they stepped in and they said, if I don't get my son the help that he needs, that they would call Child Protective Services. And when they said those three words to me, I looked at them with the crazy look 
And I told him, uh, you will not take my son away from me. We'll do what we have to do. But the hardest part was actually telling my mom and her ex-fiance at the time about it and actually getting permission for them to test him. The reason why I say it was permission was because during that time, I was, my mom was in a, um, in a real bad relationship where it wasn't so much as us being held captive. It was more geared towards me because number one, I was grown. I was in my twenties when I had my son, I was 23. And, um, the hardest part was when I couldn't do what it is that I wanted to do at the time. I had to focus my attention on Jack, which that's my baby's name. And I had to learn how not to be selfish. And I think that was the hardest part because being an only child by myself, I didn't have to worry about brothers and sisters, so to speak. I do have adopted brothers and sisters and everything. And um, I have a half brother, but we don't live together at all. So the hardest part was dealing with the fact that I had to be told what to do by an adult and being treated like a child. That's what I hated the most. And... With that being said, I went through a lot with that person, with my son being in the home and everything. Then that's when the autism um, subject came up. I did what I had to do, and I decided to take control of my life and of my son's life and do what I had to do as a mom. I became an advocate right there on the spot. I literally shut myself out from the world because having... Manic depression is very hard for me to accept change, so to speak. I can accept change, but when it's something that serious and it's affecting me, it takes me a while to overcome that. So I took everything that I had to learn about autism and I just devoured, I threw myself into it. I started reading books, noticed that a lot of celebrities had children who are autistic, um, attending different parent um, groups, joining different groups, affiliated with autism, um, reaching out to Autism Speaks, getting the help that I needed from them with the different resources and the different things that they had in um, my community. And actually, that's how I met my husband. My husband, um, he is a, an instructional assistant here in the Newport News area. And he was the one that basically told me, yeah, your son has autism. Let me show you how, let me teach you on how you need to learn how to work with him and everything because he has experience working with special education children. It was like literally a match made in heaven for my son and him because my son flocked to him like that was his father. And because he took the time to get to do what it it took to get to know my son, understand his condition, and then teaching me on how I needed to understand his his condition and work alongside with him, it actually made the process of my son having autism a lot easier versus doing it by myself. And now, fast forward, my son is 11 years old. Um, he's in the sixth grade, doing very well, straight-A student. He still in special education classes, but I'm starting to learn more about how to deal with a teen, because he may be a teenager in two years, Lord have mercy, how to deal with a teen who is autistic, He's already giving me lip. Sometimes I just want to punch him in the face because he keeps talking back to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, the coolest part about him is that he loves being in his own world, doing what he wants to do. And the one thing I always tell him is let me handle the outside world. The hardest part about being an autistic mom is having to explain the disease and then having people compare to the disease to um, just having temper tantrums. Temper tantrums and autism are two different things. It doesn't even fall on the same wavelength. When you have, when your child is having a temper tantrum, they just want attention. But when your child is going through the meltdowns and everything that comes along with the autism, it's not even dealing with attention. It's because of the simple fact that they are processing things much faster than they can speak it, so it becomes an overload on their brain. And a lot of people are not understanding that. But my thing is, I hate to explain it, but I'm willing to share what it is that I know from my perspective of being an autistic mom. 
and just sharing with the world how autistic how autism works and that a child can have a normal life and be autistic at the same time i think the hardest part also with autism is when uh, my stepdaughter didn't understand what was going on with my son so she kind of in the beginning stages turned her back on him as she got older we had to sit her down and talk to her about that and explain to her this is what's going on with jay this is how autism works boom 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 and now she is very overprotective over him and i'm fortunate and blessed that she was willing to actually learn how it works and now she's not as big as an advocate for autism like my husband and i are but she is willing to talk about it from her perspective as far as being a sister to an autistic a brother so with that relationship that they have it's an unbreakable bond which I am grateful for because the one thing my child always told me was that all he ever wanted was a father and a sibling. And he got exactly what he wanted when I married my husband. So autism is um, it's not a genetic disease. It is not passed down from generation to generation. It is a developmental delay. A lot of people associate autism with mental health. Um, it is not a mental health issue. It, it, it will never be mental health. It is a developmental delay in which a child's brain processes faster than the normal brain of a normal child. And when they become on sensory overload, that's when they start going into um, into the fact to, into the faction of um, everything is too much for them. They literally melt down. They break down and they have meltdowns. The meltdowns sometimes can be very minimal and they can be out of control. And I've seen my son go from minimal to out of control in six seconds. And I can promise you, it is like a tornado to just rip through your home. It's the worst thing to see your child in that much pain and not being able to have them to tell you that they are in pain. You literally have to figure it out. You have to pay attention to the signs. You have to watch what's going on with your child. And I noticed that a lot of the parents, and especially in my area, a lot of the parents that have children that are autistic will not even admit that their child is autistic. And it's hard on the teachers because the teachers have to deal with that. And when the teachers are trying to recommend the kids to be tested, the fact, the sad part is that you have the parents, majority of them are single moms, that go against it. And then it makes it harder when that child grows up. And so I didn't want that for my son. So I did what I had to do put myself on the back burner and make sure that my son gets the help that he needs. And he is doing very well at the age that he is at now, but it was a trying time for me, but it made me become a stronger parent. It made me become a stronger woman. And it just overall made me a better human being. Just a very quick thing. I know she touched on it at the beginning before we talked about your son that uh, you said you had a reputation. What kind of reputation was that? Uh, well, I'm originally from Farmville, Virginia, and Farmville, Virginia is a small town um, that is um, famous for um, two colleges, Longwood University and Hampton, Sydney College. Um, Farmville, during the time of the vice presidential candidate, was um, featured all over the United States as one of the places where that Longwood University would actually host the vice presidential candidate during the time that um, President Trump was running for office with Hillary Clinton. Um, Farmville is a place that I hated as a child, I will say that. But now that I am older, I am proud to say that I am from there. Um, my family is one of the most respected families from Farmville, Virginia. In Farmville, there are certain families that actually have I don't want to say more power, but they got more leniency than other families. And my family is one of them. My family is a very well-known family because of my grandfather um, who passed away in 2013. Um, my grandfather was known as the singing man. He used to go around to different churches and sing gospel songs in which the singing, the musical talents had passed down to my mom as well as down to me and now down to my son. So we all sing. We are very well known for singing. Um, and that's basically the reputation that 
we have. My mom is an educator in the school systems in Farmville of 41 years. She is very well known for her teaching style. Her teaching style is very different, but she's also a warm, um, heartfelt person. She cares about her students, and she doesn't like to see a child go without. So she is always helping her community by helping those students in the, in the school system. And now that she's a school counselor, which was her dream, she can now reach those students faster than she was reaching them being a teacher. So that's the rep that we have in Farmville. And different families are known for different things. My family was known for singing as well as other families. So that's the reputation that my mom was fearing as well as myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we let's, before we come to you, your other main story we're going to talk about, just tell us that you've got a faith as well, you're a church squad or not? Um, I am, my, my, my faith is Baptist. I am a Christian. Um, I am affiliated with a church back at home. Uh, my home church is Sharon Baptist Church in Cumberland, Virginia. Um, I have not been to that church in a while since I moved out here to Newport News when I married my husband back in 2017. Mm. So whenever my mom says, see, I need you to sing somewhere, can you make it? At the drop of a hat, I go and sing. Now, the last place I sung at was in New Jersey. I was in Jersey last month for my um, for my cousin's 70th birthday party, and I sung for her. And I've been singing since I was a little girl. I've been singing since I was three years old. And the one thing that I can honestly say I love about singing, I know that I can sing. Have I been fortunate enough to be to be discovered? No. The one thing that my aunt has always told me, she said the best one, she said the best talents are the undiscovered. And so with that being said, I've always carried that in my heart. I have participated in talent shows. Um, some talent shows I won, some I lost. And um, I just feel like if God wanted me to be in that arena, he would put me there. And I know that that's not the arena that he wanted me to be in. He wanted me to help people, not just through my singing, but also through my motivational speaking, which I am starting to do a lot of now. So what I do is I combine my love for the two. And at times you hear me speak, sometimes you hear me singing while I'm speaking. So I... I, I'm very, well, let me say this, on social media, on Facebook especially, a lot of people know that I can sing. My hometown knows that I can sing. And I just, in my husband's area here in Newport News, I've sung in his church. And I think the craziest part was when I sung in his church, I <laughs> they told me that the song that I sung for the bishop was so moving that he couldn't even preach for the remainder of the service. He literally ended church. So, have you ever thought of record? Have you got anything recorded or looking to progress your music? The farthest I've done the recording was when um, was like people, you know, videotaping and things like that. As far as going into the studio, um, I've had the opportunity to go into the studio, in which it never went any further beyond my um, my church home. Um, as far as that goes, after that, no, I never stepped so the steps. Ever, so why not? If you've got a gift there, and you can sing, why not develop it instead of letting it gather dust? Uh, I um, I don't want it to gather dust. I am a firm believer, and that if God gives you a talent, you have to use it before He takes it away from you. The one thing I try to do now. I teach my son how to sing. My son, he sings all the time, and he reminds me so much of me. Um, I try to sing almost everywhere I go. If somebody asks me to sing, even if they ask me to sing across the phone, I sing to them. I sing around the house, different things like that. But um, back in 2015, I actually um, was on the verge of losing my singing voice when I was, um, found out that I had acid reflux really bad and I damaged my vocal cords. And ever since then, I haven't been able to sing the way that I used to when I was a little girl, but I still can sing now. It's just, um, it's a little bit of a struggle on my throat. So there'll be some days when I can sing and there are days when I can't. And then I do a lot of humming. <laughs> but other than that, 
I still sing. I still sing. If somebody asks me to sing, I do it. So I have a, I cha- I have a challenge for you. You up for a challenge? Okay. Being Ron Ramsey on the East Caribbean borders on Hearts on Live. We're offering Nico Sios in a challenge since she has set up. She's obviously she's got more more challenges than she's going on at the moment with businesses. Uh, yeah. She's probably got more businesses than a packet of Skittles. Um, uh, they, they have colours or whatever in them. Uh, or M&M's or whatever you call it these days. But she's got a uh, very, anyway, <laughs> uh, very, very random analogy. But hey, very random. But that's Ramsey Unleashed. But um, as I say... How about you set yourself a goal for within a month or two months and record a, record a song and see if you can get your music out there. And let's just have it played okay. on Ramsey on these to go and be on borders on heartsonlive.co.uk. How about having that and having your first song played across the pond in Scotland? Okay. If you say I you can, can sing, I, how about putting... I can, sing for, I can sing for you now. It doesn't make well, me love difference. Okay, let's have a wee taster of what... Give us a random chord and sing something. Or just think of it. What kind of style of music do you sing? I normally sing gospel. Right, give us a random gospel song of a quick rendition of something, not the full song, but just whatever you can think you can come out with. If you okay. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And no. Oh, some sleepless nights but when I when I look around and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low that I can hardly see the road. But I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Through my weary eyes, they can see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. And now I won't complain. God's been good to me. He has been so good to me. He means more than this whole world could ever be. He's been so good to me. He wiped all of my tears away, turns my midnights into day. So I'll just say, Thank you, Lord, and I, I won't complain. There we go. Uh, hey, hoo hoo! Uh, <laughs> if you're hearing that, for the, if you're if you're listening to this show and you think she has the talent, and you <laughs> want to take her on and maybe get her or do a duet with Nikwa. I think it, yeah, I think you're so seriously. I think you're hiding a talent there, and, uh, and if you are willing, don't. I think you're sitting on a, a talent. And if it's going to, just doing sporadic singing in churches, I think you're missing a trick, to be honest with you. Uh, in my opinion, people might agree or disagree with me if they're listening to this, but I think you're, especially there's people out there who might be happy to do a, uh, a duet with you or write some songs. Yeah. I highly recommend if you ever want to do a duet, there's uh, people, well, there's Dionya who you've been speaking to, and there's also... Um, I wrote Brent Mann because gospel. He's a country. You have a country gospel. You can uh, do a new new tuning and get it recorded. You don't physically have to be in the same place these days. You can still do it. Right. But uh, I think I'd highly recommend you team up someday and do a duet, do some new tunes, and make make a name for yourself. Uh, why not? In the yeah. day, you've uh, you juggle on enough businesses at the best of times. So why not just add to the pot? Uh, that is true. <laughs> so Thank we've you. just had a complete rendition there. So what we'll do? Um, we'll take a quick break. We'll take a quick song from uh, Aaron Rigdon. We'll do which is gone. And um, as I say, we'll be back with uh, Nico with her other. Uh, part of our story which has uh, gone on and then we will round up the show where we'll find out where 
people can connect with Nikwa. Um, also, uh, we'll have all, all our links in the show notes at the end of the show. And as I say, it's been great to have her on the show uh, on Ramsey and Leash Going Beyond Borders on heartsonlive.co.uk. So we'll be back after this. This is Afia Letha from KingdomBeats.com. Proud to be a sponsor of Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders on HeartsongLive.co.uk. And welcome back to Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders. That was Aaron Rigdon and gone. Uh, so we're going to tell into the last topic, which is very serious. It goes on and a lot of people go through it, uh, whether male or female. And Nico's going to talk about her. She was involved in a domestic violence relationship um, and what, the hap- what happened there and how it all kicked off and her experience and hopefully by listening to this, you will be able to um, un- maybe un- learn from it or re- relate in some way or form or be able to support her if you want to connect with her and maybe be able to have her as a speaker uh, talking about it in one of your, if you've got an event coming up or going forward. So, Nico, please tell us about your the situation. Um, I've actually been in two. But the crazy part was the second one literally did not make any sense. So, (laughs) but I'm going to talk about both of them. The first one was actually with my son's father. Um, I 
dated, I met him in high school when I was a cheerleader. And um, we was in a domestic violence situation then where um, I got pregnant by him and I lost the baby because we were fighting. The second time I saw him, we decided to put the past behind us and make things work. Um, but it actually reverted right back around. Um, I was in a domestic violence with him for three and a half years. The I was that's actually my child's um, biological father, and um, it was some. We had some good times, but we also had we had more bad times than good. Um, the hardest part was actually trying to find someone to believe that I was in those situations. Um, I've had people to tell me, you know, you deserve it. You know, you talk too much. You run your mouth too much. And maybe if you would, you know, stop running your mouth, maybe he wouldn't hit you all the time. Well, I tried that too. It still didn't work. Um, he would just get mad over everything, whether the food was too warm or the food was too cold. Um, he would not only um, physically abuse me, but he was also verbal abuse as well and emotional. Um, spiritual abuse. Um, I stopped going to church because I wanted to be under him all the time. Um, I lost everything that I had with him. I had a car, I had a home, um, I had jobs, multiple, multiple jobs. I think I was working four jobs at one time. I had that going and everything, and then I lost it all because of him. And it took a long time for me to pull away from that. I think the hardest part being in a domestic violence relationship is not the physical. It is always the mental. You have to learn how to get over the mental obstacle because anybody can get up and walk out the house. But it's all about can you overcome the mental stability of the fact that you have to understand that you don't need that person. And that was the hardest part for me. I felt like I needed him. Um, there would be times where I would literally get up during the middle of the night. He wasn't home. I would literally walk down the street in farm, I was in Farmville at the time. I would walk down the street two or three o'clock in the morning looking for him. And sometimes I found him, sometimes I wouldn't. Um, lost a lot of sleep during those years. <laughs> um, it got to the point that I can literally say I don't even remember the first two years of my relationship with him. That's how much I did with him. Um, I started to become a, um, I started to become a drug addict with him. I became an alcoholic with him. And I'm not going to say that he pushed me to do those things. I did them on my own. I was actually trying to escape reality. And so I escaped it by doing drugs and doing and smoking, um, well, doing drugs, drinking alcohol and, um, Having a lot of sex. I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, hey, this is unleashed. We, <laughs> hey, hey, keep it, it, keep it real. It happens, <laughs> you know. It happens. It's life. Absolutely, that is life. And um, I did everything that I could to try to escape it. Um, going to church during that time didn't even feel right for me anymore. You know, you get to a point where you don't even feel like God can even accept all the things that you have done, and that was the position that I actually felt like I was in. I felt like God wouldn't even welcome me into the church anymore because of all the things that I was doing. And it wasn't that I it wasn't that I didn't know what I was doing. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was very, you know, I was very capable of understanding what was going on, how I was going on, but I did not care because the love that I had for him at that time overshadowed everything else until I got pregnant by him. And then I learned how to shift that love that I had for him into the love for my child. I think the worst part, um, the worst type of domestic violence that I have experienced with him was when uh, we were dating within our first year. And I remember that he wanted me to drive the car back home. And I told him that I was tired. And I literally got my tail whipped in the parking lot of an apartment complex. And I remember screaming for help and people were standing outside watching and nobody would help. That's when 
the trust that I had for strangers slowly started to fade to where I just couldn't trust no one, not even family anymore. Um, that was one of the worst. The, actually, that was my first domestic violence dispute with him. It was actually one of the worst times of my life because not only did he beat me in the parking lot, but he was also beating me all the way down the road till we got to the countryside. And then he took, uh, um, I remember him pushing me um, out of the car and he took a metal part that you use to turn to try to get the um, bolts off of the car when you're changing a tire. Yeah, he took the sharp end and stuck it in my back as far as it could go, breaking skin. And then I remember he kept punching me in my head. Um, He didn't leave me for dead, but he did try to run me over three times. Um, Eventually, I don't know what snapped in him, but he must have felt like what he was doing was wrong and eventually he came to his senses. As time progressed in the relationship, we went through more where I was thrown up against the wall. My head was taken into the wall. Um, there have been times where he would have women in my home. He had women call in my house looking for him. There would be women in um, in the house, and I'm coming home, and I'm looking at all these women in the house, and him and his friends are sitting there, and then people were doing drugs in my home. Then we almost got... Um, we almost had our lives taken because of the affiliation that he had with a gang in Farmville. He, um, because he smoked up all of the drugs, they were coming after not only him but me because somebody had to pay the, had to pay the man, and I had to give up that. I lost my car. I lost my. I was evicted from my apartment, and it was like the more trouble he got into the more I was drawn into that lifestyle. Um, He went to jail twice, and I felt like during those times when he went to jail, that was my time to walk away, and I never did. I messed around, but I never walked away. And I look at it now, and I sit here, and I say to myself, you know what, That that was the time that God was trying to give me the opportunity to walk. And because I did not take heed, I suffered a little bit more. So leaving that relationship um, was actually pretty bad because after I gave birth to my son, he called, um, after seeing him, he called the hospital and said he didn't want to be bothered with me no more. I went into a real bad depression where I didn't even want to take care of my child. I wanted to get rid of him. I wanted to dispose him. And then I said to myself, no, I cannot punish my son for what his father did to me because my son didn't ask to come into this world. And so I always, and today, I treat my son as God's baby because this was the child that I was supposed to have at 16. I was given a second chance, and I didn't want to ruin the second chance that I felt that God gave to me. So I learned how to put all my love into my, into my son and leave him out of it. It took me two years after that to get over him. Like, it was so bad that when we would go to court for child support, I I could never look him in the face. Like, I would always be scared to see him. And then coming out of that domestic violence relationship and walking right into another was actually crazy. That domestic violence relationship was not even where I was sleeping with the guy. This domestic violence relationship became from my mom's ex fiance where my mom caught the verbal abuse and I caught the physical abuse. When my son was first diagnosed with asthma, it was June, not June, excuse me, it was January uh, 2008. My son was diagnosed with asthma and um, because I fell asleep from um, taking care of him, trying to get him straight, Um, My mom's ex-fiance felt like he needed to put his hands on me. And what she did, he pushed me into the closet. Mind you, my child is in my lap. He pushed me into the closet. The humidifier broke and the water went everywhere. The machine um, fell on my foot. My son hit the floor. I could not find my son, but I could hear him. Luckily, he crawled. He actually crawled to my mom. And at that time, he wasn't even crawling. He was walking. He crawled to my mom to get to her. 
And then I remember he, um, I remember my mom's ex fiance taking me and throwing me on the bed and literally putting his elbow into my back to pin me down to teach me a lesson. And I'm sitting here yelling and hollering and screaming, and I'm sitting here trying to tell him, you know, get the F off of me, get off of me so I could breathe because I do have asthma. And he just felt like it was his need to take his anger out on me because my child was diagnosed with asthma. Eventually, later as time progressed, every time that my child went into the hospital, I got my tail beaten because he went in. My child was admitted to the hospital twice a year. And twice a year, I would catch those severe beatings. But the day, that day, I had to go to work. And I did not want to go because not only was my face bruised, but my son had a busted lip and a busted chin. And I didn't know until I looked at him. CPS was almost called on me when I got him to the daycare because they thought I put my hands on my son. And I didn't want to tell him the truth because I did not want to get in trouble by my mom's ex-fiance. So I didn't say anything. Um, when I went, my mom sent me to work, even though I did not want to go to work because I was in a lot of pain. She said, throw some makeup on, you'll be all right. I think that's the worst thing that my mom could have told me. But I had to understand that during that time, my mom was being brainwashed. And she was already completely gone by the mind. So there was nothing that I could say to her to make her feel any different. I went to work, and um, luckily, those people that was at that job that I was affiliated with, they called the ambulance. I got rushed to the hospital. I found out I had an aneurysm in my in my head. I did not even know. Um, I honestly don't even know how I walked in the door that day to go to work, but I did. And because of those good, kind-hearted people, um, I now that I'm older, um, no one can touch my head at all. Because if they touch my head, I have real severe headaches. Um, I started having panic attacks. Didn't even know what a panic attack was until I went to Dollar Tree and realized there were so many people around me, I couldn't breathe. And um, the worst one, the worst domestic violence situation I had after that was when my child, I think, I think Jay was about two or three, and my mom and him were arguing. My mom wanted to take me out to eat for, uh, to have a mother-daughter day. And he did not want me to leave my child with him because his point was I didn't give birth to him. I needed to be at home raising my, ch my son instead of going out in the streets having fun with my mom. Um, I honestly believe that he was jealous of the relationship that my mother and I had after my father passed. So he did everything that he could to separate my mom and I. My mom had our, we had fights. My mother and I fought many times during those years um, to where we called each other out of our, our names and we actually had fist fights because of that. And I was doing everything that I could, but um, I did what I had to do in order to protect my son. I had people telling me that I needed to leave and leave my mom there, but my point was, where was I going? I didn't have a car. I didn't. I wasn't making enough money at my job to sustain myself, my son and I. So I turned to social services, um, had an excellent case manager who was willing to work with me and everything. But the night that I will never forget was when my mom and her, my mom and her um, ex-fiance was arguing. And I remember I walked out the room because he told her that he was going to put his hands on her. And I remember telling him, you put your hands on my mom and you will not live to make it to the next morning. And he got mad. Luckily, my mom interceded. She came in front of me and her. And my mom told me, go down the hall, go into the room. And I did. I was raising hell, going down the hall. He went into the corner. And for some reason, I think he blacked out. Because next thing I know, I heard my mom holler. And my mom was coming to the room. But he pushed her all the way down the hall to where she fell into the bedroom. And she caught a bruise. And he came behind me and pushed me and slammed my head into the TV. Then he turned around and slammed my head into the window, and then we fell on top of the table fighting. My son was sitting in the chair. He never moved, but I kept hearing him holler and scream. I remember blacking out, but I did not black out to cry because I've always cried every time he hit me. 
I think the the that day when I blacked out was the last day that I said I wasn't crying anymore, that I was going to fight, and whoever came into my life and wanted to come between me or my family, I would fight them with every with everything that I had. And I remember after he finished punching me in my face, I pushed him off of me and I started fighting back. And I fought him to where I literally lifted him up and threw him across the wall. That's when I realized that I had the strength inside of me to protect myself after all of these years. And um, I did what I had to do, called the police. The police came and locked him up. But unfortunately, the judge went into his favor because I did not show up for court and I did not know when the court date was because the police department did not tell me when the court date was. They told me that someone was supposed to call me, let me know when was the court date, and did not realize that the court date passed and no one called me and told me anything. So he was able to walk away scot-free without that being on his record. And I said, okay, enough is enough. And then when I met my husband, my husband knew that something wasn't right. And he decided to take matters into his own hands and got me and my mom and my son out of that situation. And to this day, my mom literally will do anything for my husband because she'll never forget that day when he got us out of there and made us become closer with each other and was able to get him out of our lives forever. But it was very detrimental. My son went through a real bad period of not eating. And I had to step in with the school system and get the school system to understand what was going on. I was able to talk. Um, we became homeless after my mom left him. Um, it was also during a bad period because my grandfather passed away the day after we walked away from him. Um, it was just a, it was a, what I consider eight years of suffering. It was eight years of darkness for me, but those eight years of darkness made me to become the woman that I am today. I don't wish to change what has happened in my life. I know some people say, if you could go back in time and change things, would you? At one point I said, yes, but now that I'm 35 and I just celebrated my birthday on last Wednesday, I can honestly say I wouldn't change anything because if I were to alter any part of my past, I know that the strength that I have in me now would not be where it's at today. So I thank God that I went through what I went through. It made me gain a closer relationship with him. It made my relationship with my mom become a lot easier. And it made me able to do things that I know that I was not able to do before. I can do it now. Right. Uh, well, I want to say, I want to say thank you for your time. It's kind of uh, upon us. We're going to wrap up. Uh, we are slightly going over time, which I apologies. Uh, but as I say, it's a great story to hear this. And if you're challenged by what Nico has said, uh, you can connect, connect with her. How can people quickly connect with you? Um, they can connect with me on Facebook at um, facebook.com forward slash Lady Neek, N I K Austin. They can also locate me on Instagram. Um, that's Instagram.com forward slash all things Nequa. I am also on Twitter with the same um, with the same name. Um, if they want to locate me as to become a model or a sponsor or designer for iModel Curves, you can locate us at Facebook. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube under the same name, iModel Curves. So we'll have all these uh, links in the show notes afterwards. I just want to say thank you to Nikwa uh, coming on the show and uh, for the time to tell her story. And if you've been impacted by or inspired or uh, can relate to what she said in all of this interview, please connect with her and reach out to her. Maybe you can be, have her on your show as well. And uh, she can t- uh, talk about her, her experience and what she's gone through and what she's learned from. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you. And uh, as I say, have a great uh, I want to say to everyone who is out there, have a great weekend, whatever you're up to. Tune in uh, next week when we have Brent Mann, the Brent Mann from BrentMannMusic.com, a uh, supporter of the show, country gospel singer uh, uh, from Canada, but living in Tampa, Florida. So we'll have him next week from February the 9th of uh, Saturday, February 9th. 
um, of February, uh, if, if, just, um, yeah, repeat myself, straight, yeah, you know, I mean, 9th of February, Saturday, from 8pm as usual, uh, you'll hear the interview with Brent Mann, so we look forward to uh, seeing you, or listen, not seeing you, but here, having you with us, and we'll catch you soon, you take care, have a good one, bye for now.